Hello everybody, we are going to be talking about the craziness that was yesterday and that was the Timo Meyer trade and then just trying to figure out exactly what the details were of all this. Before we start, I wanted to say please make sure to subscribe to my channel if you are new to me, new to hockey, whatever the case may be. I'd love to have you here along the way as I try to do this as a career. Now let's talk about this. And of course, we heard the news, I don't know, it was about 4 or 5 Eastern Standard Time that Meyer had been traded from the Sharks to the New Jersey Devils and then we waited and we waited and I know I waited and I ended up making dinner, taking a shower, all that stuff, blah blah blah. Finally, right as I'm getting ready to go to bed for work, um, I see all the stuff going on about the details of the trade so I was like, I'm just going to do it tomorrow and so here we are. I'm just going to leave it all up here, you know, I'll try to, I might even do full screen, but I'll probably just leave it up in the corner here. This is all that is centered around the Meyer trade, uh, but I wanted to talk about the main points of this and my takeaways from this and then some outcomes of this, blah, 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 blah. So, for New Jersey, what exactly are they getting for the main part? Well, they're getting Timo Meyer. That is pretty obvious. Meyer is the guy. Meyer is a player uh, that has hit the 30 plus goal mark three times in his career now and looking to possibly break his previous high, I think, of 35 goals in a season this year. He needs five or more goals. I think he needs six more goals along the way um, and is just looking incredible. He does have an injury right now. He's day to day with an upper body injury uh, and hasn't played since February 18th. But he is a guy that is young and also a guy that very well could be part of their future. He is 26. He's an RFA after this season. They could, you know, do the $10 million thing for next year, pay him a lot of cash, or they could sign him to an extension. Regardless, you're looking at this situation here for New Jersey and thinking in terms of getting a good player that is young and is going to help them win now and possibly you know, later, this is really good. And he is a guy that also will have some familiarity with some other players on New Jersey's roster. Um, Nico Heischer is, of course, a guy that he played with internationally. They have a defenseman. I'm blanking on his name right now. And of course, I didn't put it in my notes, but they played together too as well uh, internationally. So it's good, you know, to have that connection, not only of, oh, I've played with him and I can play with him out on the ice, uh, but you know, you've got guys that are from your country and that's a big thing, especially for foreign players where you're an ocean away from home for you. And I'm sure, you know, he's going to fit right in there for New Jersey. But this is big too for the Devils aside from all that stuff because this really does push them a little closer to being in a spot where they could win their first championship again since, what, uh, 2003? I think was the last time they did it. They beat the Ducks, I think. Uh, so yeah, that is really good for them. And that's clearly the biggest part of this trade in general, but biggest part for what the Devils are getting. What exactly are the Sharks getting? Well, the Sharks are getting a lot of players, a lot of picks as well. Some of these guys are, you know, current NHL players. Um, you know, some of them are guys that were in the NHL that are AHLers that will make appearances in the A or the NHL. Um, and then they've acquired some younger guys that were higher picks that maybe have had a chance to hit the league yet and the biggest part of this is that guy uh, that his name was on here earlier I'm blanking on it too it's the really long name the Russian guy that is the defenseman over in the KHL he was drafted in the first round of this previous season's draft kind of the bigger name out of all of this a lot of players to talk about here but for the Sharks they're hoping maybe he can be ready um, in the near future to take on a top four role for them maybe a little bit more it just kind of depends on what they're getting but aside from that they are also getting what is it um the two first round picks actually i should say that it's one first round pick 2023 first round pick and then i think the 2024 second round pick has the ability to become a first round pick there was some weird thing that i was reading about maybe it wasn't but there was just so many things to take away from this trade so really the chunk of it here that you're looking at is guys that have some experience that could possibly you know fill a roster spot and guys for the future whether that be prospects or picks for you to mold all that good stuff there so that's what they really got out of this so they got stuff for their future and it really looks like the devils should be better right now and san jose will get worse and i know people are saying that stinks but the reality is this is kind of the perfect scenario for both teams new jersey is a club that is exceeding expectations 
from just a lot of people in general. I know myself, I wasn't expecting New Jersey to be A, this good or, you know, anything like that to be in the playoffs. Uh, but here they are looking like they really have a good shot at maybe going on a title run, which could be awesome for them for a variety of reasons. Not only for this year, but for the future. But yeah, just good for your fan base. Whereas San Jose, they are focused more on the future. They're focused on the draft. They're focused on, you know, bettering their odds of getting Bedard or whoever it may be. They want to be able to be bad, if that makes sense. And if you are somebody that is new to North American sports or just sports to have a draft, you want to be bad sometimes. And this is a situation where I think San Jose is in that spot where they're able to do so. So it's kind of a win-win. But... I really do think that New Jersey got away with one here, and I think that they win the trade because they can re-sign Timo, and he could be a big part of this team, like I said, but Mike Greer for the Sharks, people were hoping, you know, with Timo being one of the bigger trade pieces at the deadline, that they could get these really exciting prospects, not even prospects, I think some of them have passed the game mark, um, four games played. But they're hoping to get somebody like Luke Hughes, to get Mercer, Dawson Mercer, Holtz, one of those really exciting young players, and New Jersey basically shut it down. Mercer, I think, was kind of in talks here, being involved with this, but Fitzgerald was just like, no, that's not going to happen. So for the overall thing, I got to say that New Jersey comes away with this pretty well. Yeah, they give up some guys that could be... Uh, maybe a top four defenseman or something like that in the future. We'll have to see again in those picks. Maybe they turn into something we don't know. But as of right now, they protect that top-end young talent, and then they bring in another guy that is young that could be part of their core for the future. And we will have to see if this will lead to more big trades coming out of the the deadline week, which has been insane already. Because as we are speaking, and as this looks right now, you have six teams in the Eastern Conference that could probably win the Stanley Cup. And the East looks absolutely loaded. So I'm really glad for the Devils they were able to do this because the Boston Bruins, Carolina Hurricanes, New York Rangers, uh, New Jersey Devils, Tampa Bay Lightning, and Toronto Maple Leafs all are in a spot where they are either making moves or thinking about making moves. And in this game, if you are looking to you know be there with the best, sometimes you have to mimic what the best does and do it your own way, but still do it. And we are seeing teams like Boston, like Tampa Bay, like Toronto, etc., all make moves to become better. New Jersey, in this case, automatically will become better because Meyer is a great player, can play the forecheck. He is a guy that can settle down some bad pucks. He's a player that can score. He's fast. All these good things that you really like about him, he's good. And I'm really excited to see what he can do here in New Jersey. But who do you think won this trade and why? Let me know down below in the comments. Also, please make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new. Everybody stay safe. Have a great night, Nigel of Alki, all right. Goodbye, Brigadiers and Brigadettes. This is your captain signing off. Have a great night.